All right, we're here with Dwayne Wallace, former uh, LA Wildcat offensive uh, tackle. Welcome to the XFL Week in Review show. Appreciate you coming on. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me, man. Thank you for having me. Sure. So I always like to start off all my interviews asking people, like especially athletes, like how did you get from kid in high school all the way to playing in the XFL and TSL and college experience? Yeah, well, um, well, when I was in high school, I uh, I started my uh, freshman year. And I didn't start playing back until my like junior, senior year. And so I was kind of late to football. And so I had to go to a junior college because I didn't have grades to go to a four year. So I went to uh, Riverside City College. And um, from there, uh, my first year, I was a freshman All-American. My first year in junior college. And then my second year, I was All-American. And I had Arkansas, Louisville. Louisville was my first offer. Chuck Petrino, he offered me first. And then after that, I got San Diego State in Arkansas. And I wanted to go to Arkansas, but uh, um, Cal Berkeley also offered me. And um, I wanted to just uh, be here, be here in California. So I went up there to Berkeley <clears throat> and um, went there, started at Berkeley. We had no more. We was top three in offenses in the Pac-12. And um, that was pretty good. And then after that, my coaching staff left. And then I went to the University of Kansas, played there for a year. Um, had a pretty good offense, and um, I came out. I went to a, um, I went to the Tropical Bowl, um, um, that plays down there in Florida. I won MVP for that. It was I uh, won MVP at the Tropical Bowl, and after that, I got invited to the NFL PA. And my coach was Jackie Slater, and he uh, named he named me a uh, best overall lineman at the NFL PA, and then um, went to a couple camps in the NFL, the Bears, um, Pittsburgh. And, um, played in the XFL, uh, got picked up in the supplemental draft from um, Coach Moss. And a funny story about that is um, mm -hmm. um, I didn't get drafted, and I went to a meet and greet, and I saw and, – and I went up to the uh, Coach Moss, and I was like, man, I'm in the draft, but somehow y'all missed on me. You, you got to watch me film, man. And from there, we just had a relationship. It was like, yeah, I'm picking you up in the supplemental, man. Uh, that's what happened, and I had opportunity to start the the, the last game in um, LA versus Tampa, and um, um, he gave me that opportunity, and, and it worked out. We had a great game, you know. We had something to build on before, prior to the pandemic. So um, I had a great experience in the XFL, um, forever relationships with coaches and players, and um, I really feel like it was good for a lot of people. And it was a it was, it was some real strong relationships was built there, and then transferring back over to the spring league, <clears throat> we had to we had um we kind of got to like re re we re, rejuvenate those relationships right because there was a lot of XFL coaches and lots of a lot of players so it was just nice to see everybody back playing football because you know most people were sitting at home and it was just a lot of it was like you know kind of depressing. Mm. Um, no football, you know, going from spring football and have no spring football and relying on the league and the league cutting down their rosters. So, you know, it left a lot of people at home. So I feel like the spring league gave um, people the opportunity to get filmed just to get back into football, man, because, you know, a lot of people ask, you know, why do you do it for free? It's just for the love of the game and just, you know, to just get back out there and mostly relationship with the coaches and the players because that's very important and that's really on the look. You know, you have to have a certain level of respect for your coach for him to call you on your phone and go out there mm -hmm. and give it your all for him. You know, so. so what was it like playing with uh, Coach Coach Moss? I mean, you said you just showed up to a meet and greet and was like, hey, give me a shot. Um, what was it like playing underneath him? Yeah. He's kind of a he's kind of a character. Yeah. Man, Coach Moss is funny, man. Serious guy. He joke around. Serious guy when it comes down to work. Never see him really like um, kind of fold in any situation. He just expects us to just, you know, finish and do what we were supposed to do. Everybody doing their job. We were firm believer in that. And so, you know, we, a, a lot of times we had just had to run for, for like disciplinary reasons. And um, mm -hmm. very, very high energetic, um, very high uh, energetic guy. 
real good guy to be around, a real disciplinary, oriented guy. And um, it was fun playing for him. Man. Definitely, oh. definitely was a fun environment. So what about playing under, I mean, Norm Chow is no slouch either in, as far as pro things go. So yeah. as playing on an offense with him and even Josh Johnson too. What was it like playing yeah, with those guys? I mean, man, we had a great staff, man. We had Jerry Fontenot, offensive line coach, played at Green, uh, coach at Green Bay Packers 15 years. Learned a lot from that guy, a lot of knowledge. And he was linked up with the great mind of Norm Chow and, you know, them two together it was just like, wow, like, y'all just know so much football. And then uh, I was just talking about Josh earlier. Josh, she just, she just so experienced. He got so much experience in the league. It's just like, you know, he, 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 uh, he controls the offense. Like he knows everything. He was kind of like the Brady at the XFL. Like people always ask, what was the difference between Josh and PJ? Like Josh, I take over PJ just off of he gonna come in there and do the right thing. He know what he's doing. He know where, where the situations. Like he's he's just a real put together quarterback. And um, we started to see it, you know. And, and yeah. he never he never panics in situations, and he has that control over the offense and confidence in, in what he's doing. Always making checks on the line. Always making checks, even when he gets some calls in and we get a look. Because um, the last game we played, which was Tampa, they had the number one defense, and all they did was blitz. So it was a real con- confusing defense. Mm. So we had to we had to have a lot of checks going into that game that saved us and made that comeback and made the offense roll. Yeah. And um, and um, Norm Norm um, Chow always gave us a great great game plan for the week, and we was prepared. And, it was, um, it, was, it, was, it was really um, it was really nice to see everything coming together. Yeah, I, I was in the camp of I felt it really felt like Josh Johnson, give him two more games. He would have really been in the talk of MVP of the XFL because he was just starting to come on uh, playing games. But so yeah. then we had the whole thing with the XFL going down. When What was that experience like? Uh, were you thinking that, you know, it might come back in a couple of months or I mean, what was kind of the the chatter for us at XFL news hub, we were like, you know, we were following the, you know, what we won't say it by name. Cause YouTube doesn't like that, but we know right. it, was, it was, something was coming. And then all of a sudden a week later, everything was shut down and that was it. So what was kind of the player's reaction to all that? Oh man. It was just like, first of all, then nobody knew what it was. And then it was like, Whoa, <clears throat> what's going on? It was kind of like crazy. And then after that, everything just happened so fast. It went from, not playing to okay, we're gonna shut down the whole season. Everybody got to get get gone and go home. Mm-hmm. It was a lot of people that played in the uh, AAF, you know, the other league down there, and they was like, "Oh my god, we having flashbacks." It's like the same thing, and I'm like, "Well, what you mean? This is my first time going through something like this," and yeah. like, you know, it was just, man, it was a real crazy time, man, because you got to think about it. At least over 50% of the players played in the other league. It's true. You know, so like they went through two lockouts. So this was kind of, it was more dramatic for them than even me. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, wow, I don't know what's going to happen. And they like, yeah, they're, they're going to shut down. And, you know, um, that ended up happening. And, man, it was just, it was just a bad time for people. Man. Yeah. It was no certainty. Yeah. And then, so all this stuff goes down. And the XFL is kind of done. And then now a lot of players now tr- transition to the spring league. So what was the experience like playing in the, the TSL? Um, spring league, man, it was, it was, it was a fun experience. I had a lot of fun. Um, mostly with, with like my players and with the players and the coaches, you know, um, had opportunity to play against some guys I played in in the XFL and played against in the XFL. Had an opportunity to, you know, um, build um, see back um, coaches that coached in the XFL, and, and um, I, I played in I played both seasons of the spring league. And the first one, uh, the first one, you know, uh, played for Coach Ted, and uh, it went it went good, and um, you know. I got an opportunity to play again and I and I was thinking about it and I was just like, man, um, just off of the relationship that I built with the coaches and some of the players, you no, know, that brought me back. And um 
when I came back the second time, it was better than the first time. And, uh, you know, it, it, it was kind of sad when we had to leave because, you know, it was just like, yeah, we, we played six games that came and went fast. And um, it, the, the, the sadness was the feeling of, man, what's next? Mm. You know, what's next? It's, it's that what next? It's always that what what's next feeling when you leave an uncertainty situation like the spring league. Yeah. You know? And so um with 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 <clears throat> with 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 that being said, um had a great time, man. Had a great time, got an opportunity to put up great film. So you always thankful for that. And then um we heard that the USFL's coming out, you know, well we don't know for certain who's gonna be hired, but it's just another opportunity to give, you know, guys like myself, guys around the league, hope, something to grind for. Not to say that you wasn't working out and grinding, but it just gives you that extra, like, security blanket. Like, hey, I have an upcoming day. And, you know, it, it, it turns things up a notch. Yeah. Then, then, then just working out every day. So what, what was the reaction to the players when the news came out about the USFL? <clears throat> Oh, it was happy, man. It was happy, you know. Um, the, we, we, uh, everybody was uncertainty about, you know, whether the XFL or Canada was even going to play. And then just to hear this was coming out, it was like, man, what? It's another opportunity for everybody to get jobs. Like <laughs> everybody was happy, you know. You know, um, you know. I think about it. We played, we played in the spring league for two years, two seasons. Of, of, of spring football and it's just like you know after the second time it was just like man you know it was it, it was it was kind of like the breaking point for, for guys like you know hey if, if, if i'm not gonna get caught but getting paid to play football it's just like you know this might be the end of it for me if i'm gonna get a call from the league so mm-hmm. to hear that that's so to hear that that's coming back out in such a in such a fast turnaround which is next year it's like it's real encouraging for guys to you know stick with it and stick it out and you know give give them time for you got think about it we just got done playing for our coaches so you know if that that'd give us time to go back home work on what we need to work on and um get bigger stronger and faster and be prepared for that opportunity for when it comes back around Mm. so yeah it's definitely um players were excited. Now, what yeah, were the definitely. what were the players' reaction when all this XFL CFL talk started going on? What was what was the their reaction to all that? Um, man, people we just did it was crazy. We were like, well, well is, is how are they going to do it as far as Canada and the rules? The the most important thing was the rules because. We we had we the XFL rules was different from the NFL rules. We our kickoffs was different, like certain things was different. So it's just like wow, like like how is that? How is they gonna do that with the rules? And then like you know how are they gonna do it with traveling back and forth from Canada? It was just a lot of just like uncertainty questions that was just going on, and we didn't know if Canada was even gonna play. It was just like man, like people just really didn't know. What, what was going on so it's great to see people back out there i got a lot of my former teammates um back out there in canada and stuff like that playing now and stuff like that so that's good to see yeah so so kind of what's what's because i think a lot of people don't realize like there's like you know they see like the big tom brady's and you know patrick mahomes making all this money but there is a ton of guys like yourself that kind of you know practice squad these different leagues like playing in this you know the tsl and the usfl um, so what, what, what are kind of, what are you doing right now? As far as like, are you getting calls from NFL teams or, or you know, are you looking at CFL? Like what's, what are you working on right now? Right now I'm just training, man. I'm just training and getting better. Um, and, uh, you know, camp starts in two weeks and, um, you know, um, just, just, just hearing from people here and there, nothing, nothing major, um, you know, like I said, most people rosters are full are filled for camp right now and um we're two weeks out but i've definitely been working out with with um with um 
my my former um, blues teammate Shu. Uh, Shu, who we've been working out with? Who 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 all we've been working out with at the park? Oh, at the, uh, which park? the uh, at the high school. Oh, um, the Denver quarterback. Um, what's his name? Uh, Brett. Uh, Brett, uh, Brett, uh, Ripkin. Brett Ripkin. Okay. And, uh, and Chase Daniels. Uh, uh, and and uh, uh, Drew Brees' head trainer, Todd Durkin. Todd Durkin. Oh. He's been training with those guys Tuesdays and, and Thursdays and um, um, receiver. Oh, uh, um, uh, Golden, Tate. Golden Tate was out there. He oh. runs Ralph's. He runs routes with us every Tuesdays and Thursdays. So those guys are getting ready to leave in two weeks. So this week and next week is our last week going on the field with them. And what I do when I go out there with them, you know, it's kind of like a 707. So I snap balls for them. I snap balls and then run gases to the other end. Man, we get we throw at least like 100 to 150 balls, just both ends of the field going back and forth, just snapping balls to them. I don't, I don't even play center, but I just want to learn it. So I'm snapping, mm-hmm. snapping balls, going to the center, going long um, shotgun. You know what I'm saying? Working on that, working on that. Then, um, you know, I, I go I go do boxing. I, I go in the field, you know, just always working on my craft, getting myself prepared for this for um, camp when it, if, if my name, you know, so happens to get called. So that's kind of what I've been doing since I've been getting back, man. I've really been working and just uh, wait for opportunity when camp starts. Like I said, most of the rosters are filled up now, but stuff happens and situations happen, so I'm just always re- ready for that situation. Oh, cool. Well, that's that's good to hear. I mean, we'll hopefully we'll see you in the USFL or hopefully the NFL. Um, if people can, where can people find you to follow your career on social media? Oh, man. Yeah, follow me, man. Train Record sixty two on Instagram. Um, Big Wild underscore sixty two on um on Twitter, and um, that's 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 all my social medias, man. I'm, I'm on there and um, show me some love and uh, thank you for having me on the show. Um, I, I do want to shout out my, my my offensive line, man, for the spring league, man. Sure, I feel like sure. one of the best. Uh, uh, Beach, uh, Big Keys, you know. Um, and also, people may not know it, my man Shoe. He didn't get to play receiver, but he played corner and made some big, big plays, big interceptions, and converted corner. Um, yeah, he played. He played for the Panthers, and um, yeah, he did a real good job coming in for not being a corner, coming in, grabbing some great interceptions and stuff. And shout out to Coach Ted, man. Ted, Ted, he's just a different guy. He just know how to put great players together. He don't get enough credit, you know. Mm-hmm. He just don't get enough credit for what he do. But yeah, with that being said, man, I can't I can't wait to see what the future holds with the TSL, um, the XFL coming around. It's a lot of excitement. I'm happy for it. A lot of a lot of um a lot of good a lot of good good news always coming out. I'm always on the lookout for information about what's going on. So thank you for always updating us as players with all the information and the job that you do is really important. Oh, thank so you. I, I, I real thank I thank you for always keeping up with the news up to the up keeping us up to date and um it's really appreciated man all right cool well thanks Dwayne. thanks for being on the show and we'll we'll keep following you throughout the next year yes sir thank you man thanks